What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. Uh, we've got a great guest today. We're talking all about local branding and Facebook ads and video marketing. And man, we've got some awesome, awesome stuff to get into. Uh, just the stuff that we were talking about before we uh, started broadcasting live was well worth it. We should have recorded that and thrown that into an episode. But anyway, hopefully we'll cover all of that stuff and much, much more on the episode. We are live here on Facebook. If you are watching or listening to this after the fact i'm sorry you missed it um, yes. but for those that are live make sure to participate um, put your questions and comments below here uh, below the facebook feed so with that said let me welcome in the junior grandmaster himself in the co-pilot seat as always greg Woo -woo! what's up man dude this is gonna be such a cool show dude gene gene and i were chatting back off, off you know off camera and dude he and i were just like like just bantering, like da -da 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 da 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 And dude, we're gonna learn so much cool stuff. Matt was insulting me as usual. I put up a guard. I will not tolerate this. So this is going to be an entering, entertaining, 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 entertain. Okay, fuck it. I can't say it. Entertaining show. Um, but I want to talk about something. I've been reading the Unbeatable Mind, and and this book is so awesome. If you guys have not read The Unbeatable Mind, you've got to go take a look at it. I was t reading about one of the bunch of the stuff that he was doing, but I came away with a very, 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 very cool and relevant quote that perfectly correlate, correlates. I'm going to have a rough time talking today. That's apparent. Wow. Man. Correlates. And I had my I had my juice too. I don't know what's going on. All right. Um, so this, is, this correlates for prospecting. So take a listen to this, guys. And I'll type it into the show afterwards so you guys can have this. But here's what something I do so you guys think about this when you go prospecting and you don't want to do it so here's the here's the quote we do today what others won't so we can do tomorrow what others can't that talk that talks about the life of freedom you know that everything that this show stands for you know there's a very very powerful uh, quote so i'm gonna say it again we do today what others won't so we can do tomorrow what others can't so with gene in the house with matt at the helm guys we're going to bring some awesome knowledge we cannot wait to show you what you can do today what and what other people cannot do tomorrow so with that and one of those things Johnson. one of those things that people will not do is they will not continually educate themselves and yeah. stay on the cutting edge of what's working because that takes effort and you must burn oh. calories to do that effort, and that's man. what gene is oh. here to help us do which is to help stay on the cutting edge so gene oh, Volpe, you. gene what is up today What's up, fellas? Greg and Matt, it's good to see you. But wait, hold on. I got to be clear here. Let's be transparent. You didn't say anything about burning calories. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, come on. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. We're all good. I'm just, I'm teasing. Anything you want to get into is, is fair game with me. So, all right, good. Uh, <laughs> so, Gene, give everybody the uh, kind of the 60 second bio of who you are, where you are, and what you do. Uh, 60 second. I'll try to do it in 15. So, I, <laughs> I'm with a company called GVI Media. Uh, we are digital architects. So basically what we do is we come out to where you are. We look at your, your, what your, who your audience is and where their eyeballs are. And then we will basically architect a plan, a marketing plan to get to those people, uh, fairly regularly. And ideally at the end of the session, hopefully, you know, I'll point out to the folks or our architects will point out to the folks, which of those elements we can help them with for obviously for a fee. And hopefully they'll pick some of those out. Um, and, and retain our services. So we're a digital marketing agency, basically. We we really do specialize in real estate. That's kind of where it all started, but um, I've kind of grown into really anything at this point because I was throwing money away. You know, I would get a real estate agent that would say, hey, Gene, do you, my brother's a plumber. You know, do you do that? And I would say at the time, you know, well, you're real estate concierge. To have a plumber write a check to, the, to your real estate concierge for a for a uh, you know a marketing service was a little dirty, so I changed the name. We changed the branding to GVI Media. We cover everything now. That's Got awesome. It. You know what? And, you, good, and you've been an agent out. investor, right? No, investor, never licensed. Yeah. And there, there was yeah. actually, if you want to get into that later, we can. There's a a perfectly good reason for that oh, because people wouldn't use my services because of the competition. I did some research, and mm. so I stayed away from it to build the agency, which and it was the right choice. But no, I was yeah. an investor. We were a consultant. We taught a bunch of people how to invest and use their money from their retirement funds and do the right things and so on and so forth. That's probably for another show. But yeah, investing for sure. Cool. Cool, cool. You know what? We already have uh, someone, Gene, or Caitlin Brown, our producer of this great show, uh, says that she loves your name for yourself, Digital Architect. She thinks it sounds cool. So you are a uh, check mark for the wind column for one of our viewers already. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. <laughs> All right, Matt, take us away, Playboy. Where are we going today? 
Well, let's start off with uh, with this question that caught my eye. This is from the Lead Gen Scription Objections group, which you are, if you are not a member, please go join that immediately. Uh, so Dava Wagoner Costello asks, I've been trying to create inventory for one of our team's buyer clients, and they haven't been able to find what they need on the market. And Greg, does this sound familiar? $1 million price point, very specific property and neighborhood that they're looking in. Mm-hmm. I've been able to set a few appointments with potential sellers by telling them, hey, I have a buyer interested in purchasing your property because we actually do and might even have more than just the one, but I'm not sure if this is the best way to convert seller and please, I need script ideas. So Greg, I mean, it's this is a legitimate buyer need. Does it get any better than that as far as scripting? No, I mean, I got a willing to enable buyer, willing to pay pay this price. Maybe she can go a little bit deeper and say, look, uh, their name are, are, are Matt and Julie. They have three obese little babies, those little wood denting bastards. Uh, we need we need concrete <laughs> floors because they, they just go right through plywood. It's just horrible. Um, <laughs> we need extra wide hallways because they weigh each 300 pounds and uh, reinforced bedding uh, would be preferable. So, you know, steel tubs on the ground because they will go again right through the floor. You know, but if you explain the family in detail um, and you identify them, you know, give them a name, give them, you know, a, hum a human aspect and say, hey, I got a buyer. That's fucking great. You got a buyer. So does every other real estate agent out there. But if you're specific to them, you know, the three obese babies, they need insulin shots. So we need to be close to a hospital, you know, or at least somewhere where a crane can lift them over into the into the emergency room in case they go, you know, an anaphylactic shock or whatever else is going to go wrong with them. But I mean, if you really break down the the wants and needs of these people and humanize them. That has been really helpful for us because if someone says, yeah, right, you got a buyer, right? Oh yeah, I got a qualified buyer. Great, tell me more about them. Go right, so it's, the, it's the details, it's the specifics of it. Devil's in the details, man, of course. Okay, interesting. All right, well, let me throw this one out to uh, to to Gene first and then I'll throw this one to you, Greg, because this one caught my eye. So Vicky Cadwallader, I think, says, I, I'm hoping someone can help me make uh, contacts outside of my area to draw interest to our charming historical river town we have beautiful historic homes, but need buyers with the finances to renovate or maintain these homes. So they have a pr pretty specific kind of a buyer need. We also have buildings in our business district that would be great for those wanting to move their business and take advantage of inexpensive property. So Gene, what's, um, what's your recommendation on that? Is that something where you could potentially use either Facebook ads or video marketing to kind of spread the word on your beautiful downtown historic area and then like look for areas outside of that area that you could advertise in? Yeah, I mean that's a good start. I would think number one is you. So let me just let me bring it back a little bit. Help me understand the question a little bit better. So she mm -hmm. is representing buyers that want to buy in a specific area. Is that what I'm getting? Uh, they want. She wants to make contacts outside of her area to draw interest to the town because they have homes, but they need buyers with the finances and the, who are prepared to renovate and maintain a historical home. Gotcha. So, all right. So this is, this actually could be a very easy one and, and a, it's five letters, D R O N E. So probably what I would, what I would do with her, I would jump in there and I'd say to her, let's create a really nice area video, pick out some of the hot spots of that town, do some drone footage of some of the biggest mm -hmm. spots in there, mm -hmm. right? Like drone footage is so hot. People just stop what they're doing to watch it, you know, really highlight, get a very good voice over, or maybe some, you know, some maybe even her. I mean, she could be standing in front of certain areas, big hot spots in the area, um, and then do a Facebook video ad and target the folks in maybe in the surrounding area how far out she wants to go to gather their attention. I like it. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna you know dovetail on that. I think Gene, you're right on the money on this. But we we're talking off air about you know having you know running parallel but in different universes. Yep. You know, Facebook ads and live video. So. I got an idea is that I, I, I would run with your Facebook guy, uh, video ideas using the drone. You have to have an FAA, you know, licensed pilot, all that yep, other yep. good stuff. Make sure you comply with the, the you know, the federal laws and rules. Um, I would also, I would go to these different properties that might be a really good, you know, fit for somebody. And I would go live about the property. And if it needs work with a contractor, give these people an, you know, one-on-one -on -one idea of what they really could do with this home, what the potential cost might be. Then get together, you have a, a local school principal there on site talking about the school district that's, that home is located in. Um, you can also spout off some stats about the statistics in regards to the, the, the where, how this home um, is positioned in, in the local market, also in the national market. Then you take these videos, you film them on your on your business page, then you 
promote them and boost them out, but you boost them out to your feeder markets, to the markets where you know your buyers are coming from. So if you're a small right. river town, where are these other people coming from? What 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 met, metro area are they coming to? And then pluck on the heartstrings. Go talk to a city. Go talk to a uh, uh, the mayor. What is the major reasons why people are moving here? Then tag those major reasons in that video with hashtags and then demographics on the back end for your for your for your Facebook ads. Therefore, it's going to go directly to the perfect demographic of you know the the, type, the what these people look like, with their, their ages, kids, occupations, what their likes are. If they're a river town, they're probably like fishing of some sort, or or, or or they like water of some sort. So figure out what that is and market directly to that, and be consistent about it. As can you I, can I, yeah, can I? Yeah, I want to no, jump on no, on no, top no. of that because there's there's two things, and and this is obviously we're probably getting a little further, right? If we're further in that than a lot of people will really do, but if it ends up being a ton of commission on the back end, you can hire people to do this. But mm -hmm. in addition to what you're saying, number one, take those video ads, take those different things, and bring them into some investor groups in the area. There's Facebook mm. groups that are going on with thousands of people in certain areas, depending on how dense they are, and don't overlook here's the other thing you let, let's just use the mayor because you brought the mayor in mm -hmm. when you make that relationship with the mayor and you have that conversation make sure he's engaging in that advertisement and that post because yeah. when he tags you or you tag him when he responds guess who's seeing it his circles his circle of people so make sure you're virally reaching out to those circles you don't have access to today by kind of co-marketing with the people that you're bringing in to do video school principal there's mm -hmm. probably Listen, I know at our school where our kids go, if I put an ad out like that, and now you got me thinking, Greg, I got to be honest. If I, put an ad, <laughs> if I put an ad out like that in my school, there's a lot of money up there, and there's probably a bunch of investors that I don't know about, and they see me doing that because the school principal put out a drone video that I shot on a property I'm ready to sell. I may get three phone calls. I don't know. Yeah, and with the with the businesses downtown, you can take those to you know industrial you know, industrial to commercial brokers and do a video and say, hey, look, do any of your agent any of your buyers looking for something like this? This is you know your ROI, your 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 net on net, whatever you're looking for. This is what you have to put into it. You can take a drive into the major metro market, you know, go go walk in and say, who who works this type of property? Oh, this dude. Okay. Go talk. Go sit down and talk to this to these different uh, brokers. Go to LinkedIn. Take these videos and upload them to LinkedIn. You can do three tags on the when you do articles in LinkedIn, you know, articles, and and you can do uh, real estate, uh, commercial, or you know, whatever else you want to tag in there. And start a, a relationship with professionals who might be looking to read something on another format. But I mean, you can do you upload this stuff, download it off of Facebook, upload it to YouTube, take the link from YouTube, put it to your website, take that link, go back out to link uh, to LinkedIn. Go to rev.com, have these things transcribed, the original content, push that out to the, the additional markets. You can stream it out on the Periscope, which is international, do hashtag commercial real estate, hashtag Rivertown, hashtag investment, hashtag whatever. You know, you get the point. But the majority of this stuff can be 100% free, and, and it can be really fun. I mean, because it, it's all about being creative. What could you do that nobody else is doing and do it better? Because basically, Facebook Live and Periscope are basically your own personal television channels now. You can do whatever yeah. you want. Yep. Yeah, you know? That's very true. I hope. I, hope, I, Gina, I, I think yeah, so there's there not got, got that one covered a lot, Greg. Um, <laughs> so there, there is one, one detail here that I wanted to bring up where she elaborates in the comments. She said she's, she's in Missouri, about 90 miles north of Metro St. Louis. So I will throw a quick idea onto this, which is to run Facebook ads in uh, – semi upscale areas or, or demographics of St. Louis uh, with the tagline or with the headline of work from home and not deal with the city life. Like just, you know, the quick, quick off the cuff idea, but mm -hmm. marketing that to the people in St. Louis that are maybe tired of living in St. Louis and aren't physically tied there and mm -hmm. would like to be in the surrounding area, but they can work from home. So that's an option of, of, hey, you know, let's slow your pace down and enjoy, you know, historic home living, but still be able to um, to work from home and be within striking distance of St. Louis whenever you want to get into the city. So yeah, and listen, and, uh, and listen, just to, to go further on that, kind of like we were talking about before the show, pre-show, um, throw it at the wall. See what sticks. I mean, go at it. Hit it hard for a week. Watch it. I mean, there's so many, so many insights and analytics you can look at to see if it's working. If it's not working, scrap it, start over. Yeah. You know, you make sure you're watching the insights and what kind of activity it's getting, what time of the day you should be posting, all those good things. There's a lot of info there that should be able to help you streamline what you're doing. Yeah. yeah so you, you have to make sure you're not just talking into it like an empty, empty bucket, dropping no. the bucket. 
You and if you guys want, you guys should definitely be using hashtags on this because people are or do search hashtags. Go to hashtagify.com and you can t plug in your hashtag and you can see what it's pull, how it pulls, and what other related hashtags are around it, and see if it's going to be worthwhile. Because if you put in a hashtag that you think is super duper nifty, but nobody fucking you know uses it, then what's the point? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, yep. Those are the stupidest hashtags ever. The ones that are that are all about the one person, and nobody's <laughs> ever going to use them again, and nobody's going to search for anything even remotely related to the hashtag you just used, and yeah. it has no humor value either. It just it basically is just a waste of your time. A waste of time and money. Absolutely. Yeah. So be smart about it, guys. This is your business and your money. You want to get this thing sold as soon as possible with using almost free, almost 100% free resources. Wow, that That's was right. a lot of knowledge. I love this. Gene, you come, you got to be a regular, man. Hey, man. Yo, <laughs> listen, I got nothing else to do. My wife will tell you I don't do shit during the day, so I can come on here all day if you want. You can have a 24-hour podcast if you want. It's fine by me. <laughs> and the, actually, well, Facebook will let you do that on live streams now. You can you can literally record forever, but after a certain time, it shuts off and it won't actually record. It'll just stream and it's done. Yo, listen, I gotta I gotta stop you, Greg. I just want to let you know, I, I want to, I when I see you in person, I got three 275 pound babies, so I'm a little pissed off about what <laughs> some of the car. Are they wood denters? Yeah, wood denters. Right. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I, I want I want to clarify everybody. Uh, we always joke about this, but when I talk to people, they always get so serious with me. They're like, Greg, Greg, what? Why are you so mean to Matt and his kids? And I'm like, No, no, no. Matt's not married, and he doesn't have any kids. <laughs> These are just jokes. <laughs> oh, boy. It's been such a running joke for so long on the show that, yeah, yeah people that come in halfway through have no idea what you're talking about, Greg. It's just <laughs> no, they're like, God, this like, guy's oh my God, he just insulted Matt's kids. That's and crazy. every obese person on planet Earth. I'm like, no, no, no. I pick on Matt because he's so health conscious that if he has like a quarter of a pound on him, he's like, I'm fat. I'm like, oh, so stop. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, Gene. So before we dive into, we've we've talked like a whole bunch of of, of tactical stuff, but I want to go strategic uh, in here in a second. But before we get to that stuff, um, let people know how they can learn more about you and connect with you. Easy enough. Or, uh, these days, you can go to gvi.media. That's our webpage. Or you okay. could hit me at Gene. That's G E N E for the folks that think I may may or may not be a woman and spell it J E A N. <laughs> it's G E N E at G V I Media. Um, or yeah, listen, I'll give out my cell phone six ten nine five two ten eighty one. Text or call me. It's easy enough. Cool. Yeah, that is easy enough. All right. And then, guys, for uh, for us, make sure to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher, depending on whether you want the video or audio version nestled between your ears where we so belong. Oh, so deep. So yeah. deep. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then go to uh, – Yo, I was actually going to subscribe until you started uh, that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, my God, Greg. All right, That's and then go great. to mechanicalrealestatesystems.com. Uh, you can get Greg's favorite scripts. Uh, we're um, we're adding some things to that all the time. And uh, and then you can also get our farming course, High Tech, High Touch Real Estate Farming, which is where I uh, basically squeezed uh, Greg's head like a uh, like a ripe tangerine and got all the goodness out of there on eight and a half hours of, uh, of video all about how to uh, develop and dominate your own farm. So that's all on the website. So anyway, with that said, Let's dive into the strategy a little bit because, Gene, we were talking about this before we started broadcasting. So I want to get to this. We've talked – like there, there's a lot of tactical stuff you can do, but I want to give people like the framework that it fits into. So when you when you look at someone's like digital strategy or they're starting from scratch and they're kind of wondering what to do, where do you even start with them to help them get started down the right path? Well, okay, so let's assume we're starting from scratch, and they, because and and in the real estate world, we see a lot of this. We see a lot of folks that are coming to the table that you know they've been fighting this animal for five or six years, and now they just realize they have to do it, right? And I'm sort of talking the digital social space, right? Right. I mean, the reality of it is, is if you want a simple rule, it's follow the follow the viewers and follow the dollars. You know, there's a reason why Facebook is number one in the world. It's because there's 1.7 billion people. You know, and people always ask about a Google algorithm. What's the Google? Oh, listen, here's what I can tell you. If you're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, YouTube, and Pinterest, they're the top five ones out there with all the most people. So what happens is forget it. You don't need to understand the Google algorithm. What you need to understand is that there's 1.6 billion, 1.7 billion people on Facebook. So Google looks at that and says, well, that must be a trustworthy ranking site, right? I mean, what else does there need to be behind it? So the mm -hmm. first thing I always tell folks – and you know, I've been doing this 
eight, nine, ten years, and before that, I was in IT. My job was to actually go out to CEOs and explain at a high, at a very high level, what we were doing to help their networks. But they didn't want to hear the ones and zeros and the switches and the OC12s. They just wanted to know what did it mean to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So they sent me out there to kind of translate that stuff. And the end result ends up being for, for I, I see this a lot with. And again, I, I keep coming back to the real estate arena. But the real estate, you know, being on the older end nationally, you know, 56, mm -hmm. 57 years old is the average age of the agent across the United States. This is a scary proposition for them. I totally get that. So. What I say to folks is like, if you're watching our podcast right now, the first eight minutes could be overwhelming because we're talking about drones and we're talking about tagging and hashtagging. There's still people who don't know what a hashtag is or how it works. What, what, what? what? So, phone number what? <laughs> What's this pound, pound thing? What's this pound what? thing you got? Arne <laughs> Ar Ar says, uh, says, selling this with my name is useless. Yes, thank you, Arne. That is that he is a useless hashtag. Hey, Matt, we, we actually we got a quick testing here. Uh, we uh, let's see, maybe I missed the, uh, the answer. But how long would be a good testing phase for an ad set? So let's go over that, Gene, one more time. Let, how long would be a good? Oh man, I don't know. I I feel like a. I don't. That's a really good question. I mean, I think they tell you to go. What are the, what's the old saying? Go go wide. Um, like smaller, multiple, more, you know, so they say split testing, A, a and B split testing. Yeah, I'm, now I'm stumbling on my words. It's contagious. <laughs> so they say to be of just assistance to you. you know, that, that worked out really well. So <laughs> split testing, A and B, right? You've heard A, B split testing. And I, we were talking earlier, A, B, take an A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So you're targeting the same thing, but just throw 10 bucks at each parallel, right? At each vertical, mm -hmm. let's say. And then I would say what, – what I would say is watch the one or two that are gathering some steam and then double up on it. So I, I don't know. I'm, I guess Maybe that's a hard question. It's wide open. Yeah, I mean I know people that run them for three days and pull them. Yeah. I know people that run them for seven days and pull them. I mean if it's yeah. getting no response, you, you'll know pretty quickly, and then you yep. can pull it before the ad. You just let it set for a week. But if you've got zero response and, and Facebook yeah. says your ad isn't relevant, um, that's, that's a, a bad problem. sign. And, and you – yeah, that's a problem. That's when you pull it back. There's also really, if you really want to get into it and you want to look, and you want to tinker, especially if you want to do the, you know, a bunch of split testing, split testing headlines and all this graphics and all this stuff, go to Ad Espresso, which allows you mm. to build your ad outside of the Facebook Ad Manager. Pop in, a, you know, a bunch of different headline and subheadline combinations and graphic combinations. Run the whole thing with a master budget, and then it will just tell you, hey, this graphic sucks. Uh, this one's performing the best, and then this headline's doing the best. This headline's doing the worst. Would you like to stop? this headline and this graphic that are underperforming all the rest. You cut those out of there and you just keep uh, testing and get, finding what the best is and testing the new things that you come up with against the control, essentially. Yeah, that's that's so, brilliant. That's really good. Yeah. yeah, it's 50 bucks a month. It's a good value for uh, for anyone that wants to actually literally tinker with uh, with Facebook ads a lot. Can, can I step on that a little bit further? Mm -hmm. You're you know, guest. step on anything you want. Step on you. You're not stepping on anything. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, listen, don't, don't hassle me too much because I'll forget what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> my ADHD kicks in. Well, listen, but but listen, go, to that point, you know, how long should we run it? You know, I think one thing I try to really make people aware of is, you know, there's there's a lot of data across the United States. How long should I run this? How many likes is a good number? What what should I have? You know, how how many people should see this? How often? I could go on and on. The reality of it is like the big one for me is how many times a week should I post? I get this all the time. You're posting too much. It's not how that works. It's about your audience. There's data out there that says on average across the United States, you should post whatever the number is. I'm making it up three times a day. That's your best traction, right? But the reality of it is, is that my audience may have less tolerance for my crap than maybe Greg's. So what you have to do is operate in your bubble. And in that bubble, you got to create your bubble across each platform. If, you're, if your client base is loving your seven times a week posts, then stick with it. But if you start to watch people hiding your posts and unliking your page, when you get to seven, drop it to five. You you operate in your own bubble. You can't go off of – you can't create and run ads based off of what Gene Volpe is doing. You have to run them off of what your audience wants. The only way to figure that out is to do it, push the limit, and then tailor it towards what they're telling you they want. And you'll see that through likes, shares, comments. You know, people calling you to bust your stones. I get that all the time. When somebody calls me to say, I saw you on that podcast. I could see that the the glare off your forehead. Guess what? That means you were watching, sucker. 
You know what I mean? You know, so, <laughs> That's a bitch. Yeah, right. So I play <laughs> off that. So you got it's really important for these folks that are listening to make sure that they're operating in their own space. It's good to know the numbers, but it's more important to know your numbers. Yeah. So I look uh, while you were talking, Jen, I went and just pulled up a quick thing from uh, Buffer Social on how many times you should post on each of the different uh, majors. So Pinterest, uh, five, Twitter, three, Google Plus, three, Facebook, two. So that's that per, a, what's, is that per week? Per day. Per day. OK. Yeah. Okay. So Facebook so a, is, I mean, that's a great sense. starting point, right? It's a great starting point. Yeah. yeah. So, Greg, you're matching that just in live broadcast, and then other miscellaneous posts are stacked on top of that. So you're doing but it's one post. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you did three live broadcasts a day. <laughs> but it is true. I mean, that's, Gene, that's a great point. And Car- Grant Cardone makes that point like over and over and over again in his books and stuff that uh, – when people start to tell you're posting too much, post more because then they'll start to get to the point where they just respect you for posting so much. And they yes. wonder how you get all that stuff done. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Yes. Ooh, nice. All right. $3. I keep it with me all the time. It's like a four-page book, the millionaire booklet. He said, keep it until you make a million dollars in cash and then call me. So I'm going to call him. All right. Hey, that works. <laughs> like, hey, love I, love I Grant. It. Love Grant Cardone. He is great. Right. I mean, he, he's great. He's yeah. got more energy than God himself. And you kind of wonder why he is doing all this stuff. Is because the guy wants to. I mean, he wants to be a billionaire. He wants to own sport. You know. Yeah. Ooh, is is it raining? It's summertime. Yeah. That's so weird. Um, That's no, but, man. No, but you know, you don't have to compare yourself to him. Um, he he. I always wonder how the hell he does it because he he says that like he's taking a leak. He's Snapchatting with one hand and well, you know, he's holding it in the other hand. Um, and you know, <laughs> it's just he, never <laughs> he never stopped. Yeah, and, and a content team. Just keep that in mind, everybody. Yes. All right. So let's let's talk about getting back to the local branding <laughs> thing, right? So uh, so we've talked about like the tactical side of like Facebook ads and things like that. Let's get back to the 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 strategy of getting your your message out in front of the right people consistently, right? So what's what's the strategy behind just what you help people do? Dude, video. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Video. Listen, video. I, yes. I, honestly, I, I I can't even. I can't. It's so frustrating. Now you're gonna see me go off on a tangent, right? <laughs> we started a video company for real estate business. We're talking back in 2009, and it was ahead of the game. I get it. People understood they had their virtual tours over their photos, and that was good enough. I totally get it. Why do I need to spend extra money for a video tour of this house when we have our virtual tour? The client doesn't need it. Blah blah blah. Right. Mm-hmm. Re- the reality of it is this. If you're not doing video, you're losing because right now, like there's no excuse. There's just no excuse. Your camera is like I tell people all the time. If you took a picture with your Apple iPhone or your Samsung or your Google picture, there's enough resolution in that to post it on the side of of a building somewhere. Like you don't need it. You don't need that. You don't need the – well, it's not high def. It doesn't matter. You need to be there present all the time and have people buy you, right? In your real estate world, Greg, I'm here talking about this stuff. Hmm. They're in most cases, they're buying you. When people come to talk to me, they're not buying the fact that I post for them on Facebook. They're not buying the fact that I can graphically design a flyer. Any schmo can do that, right? They're buying me. So how do they know about me? And some people aren't buying me. I get that as well. But people are buying me because they now feel like they know me and my family. Why? Not because I'm posting a quote from Grant Cardone. I love Grant Cardone and I do that. But people get to see podcasts like this. They get to see – get out in front of your folks. There's no reason you shouldn't be on video minimum once a week. Try it once a day. Get on Snapchat and Instagram. It's easy. Just hit the freaking button. Hit the button. There, go back and look in your area. I go. I always say this. Go back in your area and in the real estate field. Tell me who in your geography – you want to emulate. There's somebody out there that's crushing the game right now. There's somebody there crushing that game, and the, and you know who they are, and so does everybody else, and they're making $150 million a year, or they're selling $150 million a year. Why is it? Because they have no social presence, no website, no video? I doubt it. I challenge you. They're doing video all the time. They're getting, hot, they're getting highly produced stuff. They're doing it. They're out there. The answer to that one, Matt, sorry, I went around, video. <laughs> Thank you for coming Sorry. on the show again, Gene. I have been beating people over the fucking head with video, 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 live video. You know, then more, more video, then live video, then more video. Guys, in tw- we are, we talked about this off air, but in 2020, you know, they're predicting 80% of all web traffic is going to be video. You, if you are not on this train, you are losing traction for future business. 
even if you don't see it today, okay, you've got to start building. I mean, they're making it so easy and it is free guys. And I don't care if you don't like what you look like. Doesn't matter. Okay. I really don't because they don't care. All, I mean, unless you're really scary looking, um, but then don't go, don't do video. Yeah, but, some um, people shouldn't do video. No question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true. Um, but I mean, in all seriousness, guys, we talked about this on a couple of shows ago. Um, if you want to kind of dip your toes in the big pool really quickly to see what the water's like, you know, Facebook is coming out with audio, live audio recordings. So if you wanted to start there, have a photo of something and then do an audio recording talking about you know information so you can feel what going live is like and getting that interaction and then going live on it. Uh, guys, we had, who was that? Um, I had a, a really some really cool folks. It was, oh, it's Deb, of course. What am I talking about? Dude, Deb, she went live um, yesterday on doing live lead gen because she's watching me do it all the time. And she had so much fun, she doubled down and did it again. She was laughing her ass off and having a great time. I stick my dory on the, on the camera all the time. She begrudgingly goes on. But then, I mean, she, she gets a ridiculous amount of hits because she's bringing value and inspiration to people because she's doing things that other people say they're going to do, but they never do. So why be the inspiration to somebody? Bring a value add. Talk about something that you really are really good at but have a, a starting and an ending and a middle where you talk about, hey, my name is Greg McDaniel, again with uh, J. Rockcliffe Realtors. If you have any questions about real estate, let me know. Anyways, back to doing blah, blah, blah. I mean, I was watching this lady. She had 3,300 people watching her make a fucking, what was she? She said cutting up like a, like a, like a, like, a she's making a sweater, making a sweater. 3,300 people watching her. So yep. people are interested in some weird shit, by the way. Yeah, but, but uh, speaking of which, Google cat on a Roomba in a shark costume. Oh my god, I've watched that Dude. so many times. <laughs> but yo, listen, it's got four million views. My listen, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, and then I want to I want to offer the audience a challenge real quick. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I'll be sitting late at night with my laptop, and I'll be literally sitting in my chair crying, and my wife will look at me and say, "Are you watching that damn cat again?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get enough of it, man. It's so stupid. But here's the reality. The reality oh. of it is you never know what's – like you just said, you never know what's going to get catch people's attention. And so until you figure it out, you got to do it. But here's the challenge I would offer your folks, right? Let's just take the Facebook business page. In your When you post just something simple, you'll see underneath of it how many people it reached. Let's just go naked and talk about the reach. If you uh, post – well, sorry, go ahead. Did I say naked? No, no, no. I, I'm just going, uh, yeah, that'll get attention. I did. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, I, mean, I should probably rephrase that then. <laughs> yes. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. At your next listing, go out and stand in front of the listing. This is, and you'll see my point in a second. Stand in front of the listing, take a video of yourself saying, hey, this is Greg McDaniel. This is going to be our new listing coming on the market on Tuesday. It's 1234 Main Street. Stay tuned for more results. Take that video. In that video, create a photo, like a screenshot of the video. And underneath it, write the same exact thing you said. This is Greg, boom, boom, boom. And then finally, do a third third piece of content, right? So I'm stripping this in the content. Third piece of content with just text only. My new listing's coming on Tuesday, 1234 Main Street. Post the text. The following day, post the picture with the text. The following day, post the video. And here's what I'll tell you. The video will get triple the reach organically than the other two will. And if you see that happen and you still don't do video – Hang your license up. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, guys. I mean, that's that an awesome plan right there. And that's a great way to beta test. I mean, I think, Gene, correct me if I'm wrong here. I think that uh, plain text on, on post is pretty much dead. I mean, you, do, you really need to double that. You have to at least put a photo, and that will get shared about t uh, two times more than, than plain text. Video will get shared like 12 times the, yeah. than plain text. You know, people interact. It's an emotional connection. That's what it was really strong about. They get to know you, get to hear you, they get, they get to see you, they get to bond with you. That's why video is going to be so important uh, as we move forward. Um, and just, Gene, just for shits and giggles, I had to go out and get Kat on, uh, on Roomba, and I posted it on the feed. Thank no you problem. very much, and I'll be visiting in a minute. After we're done here, I promise um, I'm going to go get it again. See, the thing is, I love cats. You, you find cats funny. Mac doesn't find cats funny. He's a cat hater. I am. Um, well, listen, I'm not. I, listen, I can't say I, I have my own cat. She's my arch enemy. I'm not going to lie to you. Like I let my <laughs> kids do it a second time, and I'm still kicking myself. But just there's something about stupidity that I just adore. I love. I just love it. This this thing is riding around bumping into a baby on a boomba, and I just said to my wife, I'm just so pissed I didn't come up with this idea. Uh, so, guys, what this really means is that go out and put anything that you think might be funny or if you see something interesting, 
post it on a video. People will watch it and engage yep. with it. It doesn't yep. they, they use, use the 8515 rule. I mean, and I'm getting better at this, so I'm kind of preaching it myself. You know, 85% of the time, do something interesting, funny, or out of the box. You know, something that's part, you know behind the scenes in your day. 15% of the time, talk about your listings. We'll talk about real estate stats. Do not drown people in real estate stat stats. They fucking hate it. It's just like, ah. Brilliant. No, as much as I like yeah. it, they don't like it so much. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, it's very, very tough to get. And this is why somebody asked me the other day, like, um, if I did, like, consumer-facing, like, podcast for real estate and i laughed and said absolutely not <laughs> because, oh my god uh can you imagine uh, i mean and greg you've been bugging me about this for a long time because you I wanted know. something that was real estate related for the public and i just uh i wanted to yell at you i wanted and to I strangle do, you and yell at you all i the get same hundreds time. i get hundreds and if not thousands of views every time i post a, a, a consumer-based video on my Facebook page, Matt. Yeah. Those suck at Trebek. Video. But yeah, but here's the point. <laughs> Video. I would just like to point that out, number one. Number two is that number you are a charismatic and entertaining and slightly psychotic person all by yourself. <laughs> slightly. I would, I would, yeah. I mean, literally people would watch you just open up the phone book and read names and laugh at names. Um, <laughs> or, or just open up, like open up like a wildlife book and read off the names of fish. Like a, that, <laughs> that would be entertaining. So you're a bad example of people. Uh, I would also like to point out that when you're talking about like local real estate content, you very rarely, I don't ever see you do like a, uh, Hey, this is the real estate update for March of 2016. You're always doing something like, Hey, it's the fun, fun things to do local mm -hmm. community events, uh, local businesses or business owners. Like you're doing other you're doing more community content than you are real estate content you're not talking about well the uh rate went up uh 16 percent <laughs> and uh we've had guests on our show that have done that and uh it was interesting but i mean uh, uh i think i feel us <laughs> oh what, what? Oh, we're on lower life. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just, I just stabbed myself in the eye with my shock knot of my microphone. Oh my God. <laughs> all right, James. Boring no, no so listen, was, I, so video, I video is kidding. This is fantastic. Listen, I love all of this. I would watch your Matt, you're hundred percent right. Cause I would watch Greg's videos. No question about it. It's, but, but listen, this is what's important. I think, I think I'm just going to guess. Cause I don't really know Greg. I'm going to profile him real quick. I oh, have to imagine do. the, that Greg's come to the point where he doesn't give a shit if people don't like him. So, <laughs> when, no, seriously, but but that's an important element when you do video. You got to get over, and when you're yourself, you have to get over the fact that there's going to be people that are going to shit up your tree, right? Mm -hmm. And you got to be okay with that, right? Like I'm cursing right now. I know there's clients of mine watching. They're going, I can't believe he just said that. Well, here's the reality. That's oh sort God. of how I talk. That's sort of what makes me endearing to some people. Some people turn me off. I'm okay with it. But the reality of it is. If people are watching you and they know who you are personally, this goes for any agent out there, by the time they call you, you just can't screw it up. They already know that you're a cussing maniac. They know it, right? Yeah. And you that's the key. That you can only out. cover that up for so long. Yep. Yeah. You are who you are. So if you don't like the way you look or if, you don't, if you're uncomfortable with the way that you sound, whatever the case is, like it's all going to come out when the client starts working with you. Yep. Like you might as well just be who you are right up front because uh, what is that stat that's uh, that's out there right now that around 70% of the buying decision is made before they ever reach out to you? Uh, video is one of those ways that you can influence the buying decision by giving them a taste of what it's like to work with you before you even know that they're thinking about reaching out to you. Yeah. Oh, so, listen. Oh, go ahead. Jump in. I'm sorry. Sylvia just posted. Greg even makes cold calling interesting. That's a real talent. <laughs> yeah. But it. But I mean, it is true. But see, guys, I, I, it, Gene's 100% right. I just don't give a flying fuck. If you like me, great. If you don't, fuck off. Because you know what? I want to work with my tribe, my people. I want to work with people that are okay with that. That little edgier side. If you're all high and tight, bro, we are not gonna get along. I mean, I, when I finally made that decision to wear my Lucky Brands jeans, my bright colored socks, my, my Vans tennis shoes, and my custom shirts, not this one, but all the rest of them, um, and just be me and rock a sports coat, and I don't care, I'll walk into a $3 million, $4 million listing wearing that. I'm not going to get dressed up for you anymore. Just don't give a shit. So you guys have got to come to that point where you just don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, I mean, right. don't don't walk into a new listing and be like, what's up, bitches? Man, it's a motherfucking cool house, man. How much <laughs> you spend on that shit? <laughs> That that's not the right time. <laughs> Use oh my god! <laughs> if you're going to if you're going to list Fifty Cent's house, that might work. Yeah, yeah. Then you got to bring a pound of blow and you know a bunch of hookers. But besides that, that that's might right. seal the deal. <laughs> Potentially an entourage. Uh, Kaylin does say <laughs> yes. Can we please do videos of Greg just reading things? <laughs>
I guys. see a new spinoff. <laughs> I smell a new spinoff. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's going to be so horrible. Oh, man. I'll try it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are uh, Gene? What are some of the uh, the more fun and interesting things you've uh, you've helped clients do with their marketing over the past year or two? Boy, did you just put me on the spot? Yeah, I'm like, wow, that's a good one. Well, we talked about drone footage a little bit. That's a big one. We talked about video. Drone's great. Drone is really good. I think anything you're going to want to do. Sorry, I just hit the microphone. Anything you're going to want to do, you really should put on video. I think people are attracted to who you are. I mean, I my big thing is be yourself. I have a client who's a, a broker up in a suburb of where I'm at, um, like outside of northern, northwestern Philly. And um, they do this thing called on the go. And it's a base. And she's a she's a hustler. Like she's she's definitely a unique, uh, I want to say cat, right? Although that's reserved for dudes usually. She's a, re- a unique kitten in that <laughs> she is all over the place. She's very involved in charities. They, they do a lot of stuff. And she's a social butterfly. So having the camera on her while she's quote unquote on the go is actually interesting. Like you could be on the go and it mm. could suck, right? You gotta be careful of that where it's boring, right? <laughs> that would be me. If somebody did an on the go video about my life, there would be a lot of not being on the go. <laughs> be a lot of like it. whispering, <laughs> talking to himself, listening to light classical music as he strums his you know classic guitar. Yeah, I was gonna say, if, if I had commentators following me around, it'd be like um they'd have to keep it at like golf announcer levels. <laughs> wait, <laughs> I think we wait, whoa, whoa, we just figured this out. They want to hear him read Starbucks. stuff. They want to hear him read stuff. You need a commentator. Let's put that together and have him follow you around and narrate your life. That would be awesome. This, good, this, this, is how, this is how this would work. It'd be like, and Matt just in at the Starbucks. He's approaching the counter. <laughs> yes, he went for the grande. I don't know how that's going to work out. <gasps> a seat just opened up. Yes, he's going in. Oh, God, God, guys. He nailed it in one stroke. Okay, now what is he looking at? <laughs> <laughs> See, now, I, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I'd watch it. I would watch that. Now, I'm going to take it up a notch. This is where we really need to get ridiculous because if you think about this in your videos, oh now, we have to put Greg in a shark suit. <laughs> on a Roomba. On, on, yes. That's fine. He doesn't have to yeah. be on a Roomba to start. Yeah, the Roomba can be there. The Roomba can not. Yeah, but most right, important, right, right. But at least the shark suit is most important. Okay. Oh, my God. I think I just made myself laugh so hard on that because I can oh. see that happening. <laughs> oh, my God. My cheeks hurt from laughing. <laughs> He's breaking out his notepad, folks. He's taking notes. He, what he writes so small, we can't see what he's reading. We're going to get in a little bit closer. Oh, he spotted us. Everybody walk back. Okay, don't <laughs> ever make eye contact with a junk. It's, it's like a combination of golf commentator and uh, and the crocodile hunter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we get Snoop Dogg to narrate it with him. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh my gosh! Boy, this right. went south quick, didn't it? It did, man. All right, so be be yourself, but there, but there is there there is a valuable nugget, and allow me to extract it for the viewers, and that is to be yourself because that is Greg, and that's what he attracts. Here's the deal, though, guys. So Greg has all of that, like the funny side, but it's mixed in with all the other stuff that you do that gives you massive, massive credibility, and that's the other part of local branding, which is that you have to have both. If you're just the goofball, nobody's going to work with you because they may like you but they're not going to trust you. Greg, you have the other side of the equation, which is that you're doing videos like, hey, one of my team members just took her first listing, or hey, we just listed this $1.3 million property, and all those things, it's the combination of those things that work for you, Greg. Oh, God, I know. Um, (laughs) The comments are hilarious. Ryan, best show ever. He wants to show up just when the hookers and drugs are there. Mm. Um, This is what happened (laughs) to Greg to be himself. And then Al is telling us that he's not really even in real estate, but he loves watching our show. And he he wants to strap me to a drone and just flying around (laughs) around the area, narrating (laughs) what's taking place. Strap Greg to the drone. That might be, I need to save that for, uh, for the next episode. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm honestly, I think I'm out of laughter for the day. You guys are That's what you think, buddy. No oh. way. We got more where that came from. I promise you. Oh, that. God. You are so coming back, Gene. You are so coming back. I appreciate it. Oh, my okay. God. But, well, well, listen, I'll jump in because I, I know you two are probably just catching your breath. But yes, going yes. back to what Greg was talking about, the 80, 85 15, we operate off the 80, 80 20 rule. And either way is fine. But if you become, you have to become the expert in your area, right? Mm-hmm. Like you do, yeah. you have to give. We, we obviously want to be goofballs. People want to see that you're a human being. Yeah. But you do have to also put yourself out there as the expert. Like, why do I want to trust my $500,000 investment to you, Greg, when mm-hmm. I think you're a total maniac? Oh, because the other 30 times I saw you, you know, I, I absolutely know that you know the game and your business, and I feel comfortable hand, handing you the paperwork and having you negotiate on my behalf and all this other stuff. So 
we definitely, w with the video, video is a great way to do it. A month, I always tell folks once a week for one minute, give me one piece of real estate. Like, hey, this week rates went up. Here's what it means to you long term. Here's what it means if you're going to go get a HELOC. Boom, 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 boom. And then, hey, until next week. Well, in the meantime, from Monday to Monday, there's still you know six or seven days in there. And that's when you get to be a little little goofy. But have people continue to tune in to see your expert field, but don't be a boring dolt, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's true. It's own who you are. I have a guy that I worked with two years ago. He was going through a really rough time, and I actually posted it on my on my Facebook page the uh, the re uh, referral and testimonial he gave to me. And and he said, I mean, I met this dude down at the bar. I mean, we were blackout fucking drunk when we usually talk like, hey, buddy, love you, you know. But uh, when it came time when he went through a nasty divorce, you know, he and I talked and we were able to do it. But he had a trust with me at that point because he and I had, were alike. So I think we've kind of beat the horse to death on on doing the videos. Just have fun. Yep. And just have fun. If, if that's playing chess in your boxers and by yourself alone, listening to classical romantic music while sipping a, a nice Merlot, okay, go ahead. Just don't put that shit on fucking camera. Do the audio version. But I mean, just be honest to yourself and move forward with it. Yep. So, Matt, please help us and get this shit back on track. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there, there was a little bit of what we were talking about, Gene, before we went on the air, which was the, the local branding part, right, which is the, the idea of using ads to put your message and your, your brand in front of people consistently. Now, how do you do that without like just crop dusting you know, all of Facebook, <laughs> right, which we don't, we, we don't want to do. And it's wildly ineffective and extremely expensive if we decide to do that. So when you're talking about like getting your brand in front of people, I think one of the mistakes people make is it's about getting your name out there. Well, that's only true if your name means something. It's more important to get your message, your point of view out there, right? So if you can do that, then it, it gives people something that they can hang their hat on, right? I agree with all that. I mean, I, yeah. I definitely think that, uh, take a step back, even if you don't have a quote unquote business name like Target, you know, and, and especially in the real estate field, your name, your your actual name is your brand, right? So like, you know, if Greg McDaniel's the real estate agent, people want to do business with Greg McDaniel, not, you know, the brokerage that he's with. Yeah. I, I think it's important that, I mean, I, Matt, I hate to do it, but I got to go back to being consistent <laughs> and staying with, I mean, the video is the big thing. I mean, you're, yeah. so here's, here's what I always, here, here's what I always say to people too. Don't be afraid to ask your friends for help, you know, cause, cause here's the thing for me, right? If I have a 2000 friends and my 2000 friends know I'm in marketing, and they get to the point where they get sick of seeing my business post and they unfriend me because of it. Well, guess what? They weren't my friend first. Second of all, they were never going to buy products from me anyway. And so them not being my friend anymore does what to me? Nothing. Right. Yeah. So I don't, while I'm not saying, I don't want to say carpet bomb Facebook, but I, you definitely need, need to be consistent. And I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. Bring up Gary Vanderchuk, right? Everybody mm -hmm. knows Gary V turn on, go, go to Facebook, go to Snapchat, Go to you know uh, any Instagram, go to Twitter, and somewhere in that role that you're streaming in the first 15 seconds, you're probably going to see one of his videos, right? I don't. Some people will get sick of him. There's no question. But all of us will be talking about him. And I think at the end of the day, what will happen is the communication. Like I say to people, with social media, it's very difficult to get an ROI, right? Because people say to me, we put, we started posting yesterday. I did three videos, and I haven't had one call yet. <laughs> if you're looking at it the wrong way, what what you need to look at really is that the you're, the amount of conversations and interactions with humans you have go up. Your instant messenger, instant messenger from the AOL days. Your Facebook messenger, <laughs> right? I just went all the way back to that. <laughs> your, your Facebook messenger pops up more often. Your phone is mm -hmm. ringing more often. People are making comments about your social space a little more often. Here's the reality. When that starts to happen, you need to be that salesperson and jump on that and, and basically take advantage because guess what? Marketing is about starting a conversation. When people come to you with the conversation because they saw something, whether they liked it or not, it's your job at that point to turn that into how can I help you? Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing that, then I can't help you and you're terrible at sales anyway, right? <laughs> so, I mean, listen, really, it's what it is, right? I mean, I, w once you're in my space, it's up to me to grab you by the neck and choke the wallet out of you to make sure that that sounds awful, but you know what I mean? To get your business somehow, build a relationship, get the business down the road. It starts with that yeah. conversation you just created by doing the right stuff. I just had an image of you pooping a wallet. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs>
Choke um, again. Oh wow, that that went uh, a completely different direction, Greg. So I, I, I agree. And here's here's how you can do that. So when when you get those comments, when you get the questions, the instant messages, the calls, and stuff like that, Aaron Wittenstein, who is um, the founder of the the group uh, Lead Gen Scripts and Objections, has a great phrase, which is when he's on a a listing phone call with somebody. Uh, essentially, one of the things that he does in that scripting part is he says, look, we specialize in helping people who have had their homes on the market and expired off the market for a very long time. We specialize in helping them get sold in a very short period of time for the maximum amount of money. How can I help you? So in, in the course of, of running into somebody that needs something, he's able to very specifically and clearly express what he does and who he helps and then offers to help. Now, if you if you try to do one of those, if you try to pull those two things apart, they don't work. If you just tell people I specialize in this, but you never ask for the business, you, it will be less effective. If you ask for the business without giving people a compelling reason to understand what the hell you do and who you actually help, it's going to be less effective. And that's where most realtors live. They, they either don't ask for the business and they have no clear, compelling response to why should I choose you? They can't look somebody buddy in the eye and say, you should hire me because I specialize in doing exactly what you want done. And I've done it for those five people that just got done using my service over the last year or whatever the case is. Right. So if we can get to that point, I mean, that's where I feel like marketing can really help agents is getting comfortable with that moment where you have to look somebody in the eye or tell, or tell them this over the phone and say, look, you should work with me because I, you are my ideal client and I specialize in helping people like you get exactly the result that you want. Yeah. I, you know, and I think if, let's start at ground zero too. I mean, when even getting to that point, unfortunately for real estate agents, it's a very difficult field because your life cycle of business is every seven years. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I don't need a house today. I'm, I need, I bought one last year. And so on average, it's going to be another seven years. The reality of for you is if as an agent, and this goes really for a lot of businesses, you have to know your life cycle of sales, right? But for real estate in seven years, I need to know that if if they decide to change their mind and it's five years from now, they still need to subconsciously know I'm their guy. And so how do I do that? And it's by continuously staying in front of you. So I want to continue to give you good information. I want to continue to be the goofball that you come to watch because you want to see what I'm doing on a Tuesday. I want to see that because ultimately at the end of the day, I'm going to build that my name into your head when somebody calls, when your brother calls you and says, you know, I need somebody in Westchester. What do I do? Oh, I'll call my buddy Gene. I, you know, I, I see him every day. I know him. He's, I know he's in the real estate field. So subconsciously branding that stuff, you do, you definitely need your elevator pitch, right? What you were just talking about your elevator pitch is a huge thing, but even when you're not asking for business, I have so many real estate agents that tell me I've had my people in my close circle and my brothers and sisters use other real estate agents. And I said, um, that's because you're not talking about it enough. You don't have to tell them every day you're a real estate agent, but you should be talking around that field and including that at the Thanksgiving dinner. That's marketing, right? If yeah. your sister doesn't think you're a real estate agent, your sister's going to call her best friend who is a real estate agent. You're going to lose that. So just make sure that everybody's aware all the time. So here, put in another phrase, guys. This is how another annual context. Think of your favorite actor or actress. I mean, you think about that, that guy or gal that was just crushing it movie after movie after movie after movie after movie and then boom, gone. What do you think about that person? You're probably like, oh, they made like 20 million a movie. They're probably sitting on their 200 million foot yacht, you know, cruising the world, drinking champagne, eating strawberries, right? But in reality, they're probably behind the scenes. They're probably producing, directing, writing, you know, whatever else. You know, maybe they moved over to Broadway for a little while, but they're out of sight, out of mind. That's the exact same way they view real estate agents. They think of real estate agents as driving the Mercedes, wearing the expensive clothes, having the expensive jewelry, you know, making all this money on commissions when in reality we work like dogs and we make, you know, not that much when after everything's said and done, but they don't know that. So if you all of a sudden are not around, they're going to think that you've made all this money and you're out of the business. And like Gene was saying, they're going to go use their best friend when yep. they could have used you. So video is a way to humanize you. I mean, you guys have all seen this, the picture when I look like an infant, you know, back 18 years ago. That's a stagnant photo. There's no personality here, okay? You do a live videos, even if it's updates or something cool around town, that's, that's personality, that's bonding. That's a relationship being built on a one-way basis because, I mean, all the people that are liking and talking about this video right now, they're bonding with all three of us because they're bonding with our personalities. Either they're getting offended by me dramatically, which is okay. You can defend me. <laughs> you have people that are waiting. Um, um, and, or, or, or they're liking the content, they're loving Gene, they're loving his content, you know, and, but Matt and I are always here, so they know what to get. So 
per, be persistent and consistent. So uh, that's my two cents on it. Yeah. yeah. Always Agreed. stay in front of them. Cool. Well, Gene, remind people of where they can uh, get in touch with you because I, one of the people that, uh, that asked kind of what the website was again, so they may have missed it the first time. No, I appreciate that. It's either gvimedia.com or gvi.media. Either way, or you can email me at gene, G-E-N-E, at gvimedia. Cool. And what's, uh, what do you really special? I mean, what, what do you love doing for agents? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a, it's all over the place. It sort of depends on the agent. Like I find, I feel like I, well, the one thing I specialize is in, in, is getting to know that person and then, uh, you know, kind of architecting a plan based off of their personality. And it sort of differs. Uh, for me, I really like the social media management. Social media for me is exciting. I love the way it changes. I'm loving the Snapchat and the Instagram and coming yeah. in and Pinterest, how it's important. And I, I love the, yeah, I was, I come from it. So it's important that things change every day. Otherwise I get bored and I'm off to something else. So the social media aspect of it, the video, I like, I like the video. I like promoting the video and producing the video more than I like to shoot it and edit it, if that makes sense. So, I mean, all of it really, it just, it sort of depends what, here's what happens when I step into a room, like I would, if Matt, if, if I was doing marketing for you versus Greg, there would be a different approach. And I, that's yeah. what I think I like the best is kind of figuring out the client, what they do, what's going to gather them attention, who their client is, and then basically setting that plan up based off of who they are. That's a, that's a brilliant way of putting it because every person yeah. has a special superpower that you can leverage. You know, I don't like to write, but if you were just, Greg, go out and blog, 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 I'd be like, uh-uh, Gene, this is this yep. is not going to work. We'd say, Greg, yeah. here's your the, the permission to go do video. Matt, you're really good at writing. Matt, go do writing. You can write extremely well. You know, I love that idea. I think it's custom one-off builds. And yeah. too many people, people try to go to a place where it's just a factory. Uh, or they just chunk out the same bullshit. Uh, and they're like, hey, this is going to work for everyone. It's going to work for everyone. It's going to work for everyone. No, it's not, man. It's just not. Um, yep. uh, Matt, real quick, mm -hmm. I got to I gotta do a couple of quick shout outs. One is to my homeboy, Phil, over at Talon Prospecting. Guys, if you guys have not heard me blabber on about Phil, holy shit, have you been missing the boat. Dude, contact me. Private message me. Uh, I'll put a link in here for Talon. They, dude, Phil, that's 10 appointments a week for me. A week. Um, and it's, it's amazing that they're not leads, they're appointments. So just, you got to check it out. It, it just frees so many people up to go do what they truly need to do. Instead of having to do the higher, hard grind, go out and be the high eye and you'll be, have fun and, 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 and go meet these buyers and sellers. Number two, I had, I've had two epic conversations with amazing men this week. One is Ryan, uh, Ryan knuckles to you, man. You were an absolute joy to talk to. It was a pleasure. Um, and he, if you guys go to my Facebook page, <clears throat> you can see a write-up that he did about both me and Matt. Incredibly touching. Uh, totally humbled. I mean, it is, uh, it is amazing to know that we're touching people's lives in such an impactful way. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, you know, for, the, your, for your kind words. Um, and then to last night, Joseph, dude, he and I just had, we had so much fun. And, you know, we talked about everything under the sun. We put up a custom, um, you know, plan for him. He's got some really cool stuff coming down the pipe. Um, and guys, Matt, uh, you, don't, you don't know this. Both these guys uh, are, you know, like binge watch on the show. They watch everything they can get on it. They, we, we've helped them more than their brokerage has. Um, I've talked to a couple other people in the last couple of days that have said the exact same thing. Uh, they said, look, you guys are the you guys are the real deal. You guys are what's really making it happen. Um, and so thank you guys uh, for continually watching us. It, it it is truly it is truly touching. So yeah. yeah, we really appreciate it. Yeah. If you guys are looking for real estate, if you guys want to join the uh, real estate team here in the San Francisco East Bay, our team is hiring, but we are only hiring one to two new agents this year. You have to be self-starting, driven, and willing to be taught uh and molded but we are looking for agents if you guys are looking to join a team okay that is my shout outs my friend all right guys well until next time uh, i believe we have who are we got coming up on the show on friday 
Um, oh, Erin. So Erin Coops, uh, she is uh, one of the VPs of leading real estate companies of the world, which is a con kind of a network of independent real estate brokerages. We're going to talk about international referrals and selling luxury real estate. It's going to be mm. super, super interesting. Um, and so for any of you that want to raise your average price point, anybody that wants uh, lives in one of the hot, you know, um, hot markets for international investment and wants to learn about how to uh, generate and trade more referrals with agents from all around the world, especially so if you're in San Fran, San Diego, LA, you know, Miami, Chicago, New York, uh, the, the big major cities that get some of the outside investment dollars, um, perk up and listen to this episode. That's on Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. So until then, guys, gals, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the interaction comments on Facebook. We appreciate it, and we will see you guys in a couple of days. Yeah, guys, we love you.